Thank you very much, and uh, sorry again for having to interrupt the talk due to the timing. Uh, we can go on, of course, and, and keep going into more details on language in particular, uh, if you, you want to. And the way to do that maybe is to open for questions now, if anybody has a, a question. Uh, here's the mic. Um, so it may be a bit technical, but um, so if I understood correctly, it's a kind of... Um, uh, reservoir uh, network and uh, I'm curious how do you exactly learn your weights in your uh, huge uh, network? Uh, how I can sure that the uh, network is actually learn? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that is a kind of, you know, we teach some set of the behavior and the kind of doing a generalization task. For example, robot is now becoming very able to grasping the object. If when the object is located in the center, but and then, and then and then if we teach in the case of the uh, object uh, grasping a center case that is uh, we teach. But if we move a little bit to the left and right, but still robot can do. That is a robot understand not particular trajectory, but also so kind of generalized functionality comes out. So that is uh, if I could talk about language part is that there are many examples there. So, but uh, today it was uh, a little bit unclear, maybe, generalization parts. Uh, maybe a question also. Um, I have no doubt at all um, that this is the right way to build up first levels of categories and representing things. Uh, we are actually doing things, uh, in, in a sense, very, very similar uh -huh. in, in the, the lab where we are uh, in the AI lab here, mm. but I have always also a question and a concern for these uh, methods to scale at the level in particular of language mm. or more abstract uh, representation mm. because there is one thing that I think is not well captured by these models which is like fulgurant learning where you mm. uh, instantaneous learning when you observe for example a child that will learn something on the spot immediately after mm. just one example mm. shown this shows that there's something a bit different from um, statistical yeah. or recurrent learning ah. where you have to you know, train uh, weight yeah, yeah, by yeah, several yeah, examples. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there seems to be these two types of learning. Yeah, yeah. One is very well explained by yeah, yeah, all yeah. sorts of models yeah, yeah, like this. You are very right. And yeah. the other one yes. uh, doesn't fit there. So yeah, what yeah. how do okay, you Okay, so that is a very that? good question and I like the answer. So in the, I think one thing is that the hippocampal learning, that is that we already know from the lat experiment that is that uh, so animals learn that day's activity first toward the hippocampus, but that is mostly like a videotape kind of things. I without any generalization, you remember episode as it is. But uh, during the night time, it's uh, animals is rehearsing it. So that is a stored video image in the hippocampus it regenerated. Why regenerated? Because the neocortex part is relearn it about, but the neocortex part is already have a lot of the knowledge. So therefore, you need a generalization. That is a new experience stored the hippocampus have to be nicely stored in a pre-learned place. That takes a lot of time. Therefore, you dreams. You dream, the image comes out, strange things come out. That is actually memory and memory conflicting. But uh, that kind of consolidation is very important in order to get general things. But uh, you are right. So one part is a short-term memory kind of things. You remember things like a snapshot. But uh, the other things is that a generalization, deep learning things. So both things are necessary. But uh, today, particularly, my talk is uh, more about the consolidative learning part I explain. Yeah. So thanks for the talk. It is really interesting. The main question I have is that uh, when the robot do mental simulation, yes. So what is the model it is having? It has the 3D model of the world, or at which level of abstraction it knows and it does simulation? So mental simulation is actually it's a it's a start from the so we're gonna put an in, uh, intention state is uh, maybe it's provided from the outside experimental provide and the full recurrent network is working therefore it's really like a very low level things is actually mental imaging 
it's, it's, uh, for the robot, it's quite difficult. Is that real or uh, physical, uh, real or image? Yeah, that's why I'm asking. So, so. The, then, that, then we come to the, the, the important question, which I haven't solved. How the robot itself understand? This is a mental image or real one. But that is a higher level metacognition is necessary. But that's why I haven't put yet. Okay. Yes. Hello, thanks for the talk. Um, so with your system, you can predict what is uh, what the robot is going to see and see the yeah, and calculate the error based on experience. Yes. Yeah. So you can reconstruct what's happening in the system at any moment, like the what is being seen and reconstruct yes, the, yes, yes, yeah, the system. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. So I in one way, with the system, you could make the robot draw it when it sees it. Uh, yes, yes. Draw yeah, what it yeah. can but see. But that is, uh, if you, but we have to store the in intentions, initial state for each experience. So then you can regenerate it. But usually those, those you know, precise data might be gone from the brain, but still, you know, we have generalized knowledge exists. And if you provide particular initial state from the outside, and then a robot generates something, similar things can be regenerated. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Okay. Uh, one aspect I'm not sure I understood is uh, in the early graphs when you showed the intention as an input in yeah. the high level. Yeah. Uh, like, in what like format would that then intention be? Is it like in terms of perception? Because uh, I, I would expect in that system that the the only meaningful inputs I can imagine are those <coughs> who describe the things in terms of low level perception. Uh, yeah, the, the question is what? <laughs> uh, what what is an ex would be an example intention state? So that is about uh, this is uh, for I in this particular example is that uh, two neurons of the initial state. So and uh, uh, consider that uh, so this particular simple experiment, the robot always start from the same home position like this mm -hmm. one, yes. right? And then as a neuron is set to the all the same neutral 0.5 activity, okay? But uh, this one is only set to 0 0.8, 0 0.2 or something. The 0 0.8, 0 0.2, then it's, it, but that value is determined through the learning and 0 0.8, 0 0.2 is uh, and, uh, started, and then it's going to, uh, you know, grasping it, and uh, four times move up, followed by left and right. But if you set this as 0 0.5, 0 0.6, it could be the another combination of things. So that is an analog vector. So that is a whole complex behavior is a compress, whole complex behavior compressed to the small key dimension. So that is a idea of predictive coding. So that is a, we have worked for the more 10 years. So, but that is corresponds to phenomenologically is an intention. So that is uh, that I we consider. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have also a small technical question about the neural network itself. Yes. And um, I wonder if. The same neurons are reused, the same uh, nodes are reused for the two directions of the propagation. When you uh, same e e are there um, two parallel neural networks? This one, this one? At any level. Any level, at yeah. At any level, yeah. you said it goes oh, okay, in so two ways. Yeah, this goes this way or go away or this way, so you mean. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that is uh, important. So it's as uh, a connection is of in a, uh, in a, it can be whatever direction. So that makes dynamics. If it is just a forward way, it cannot make like a free prop circuit. You need a loop. The if you once you got the loop, it generates dynamics. That is uh, different from the standard network. And also it includes a self loop also. So yeah, every level, yes, yeah. So I in fact, it probably answers uh, my question, which was um, this is very similar to uh, other methods of dimension reduction, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there are tons of those methods. Uh, one of them is very popular, deep learning, where mm -hmm. you build these abstractions uh, mm -hmm. along uh, 
uh, smaller and smaller networks mm -hmm. with the possibility to regenerate yeah, the yeah. I initial signal, yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. So in your view, what would be um, a particularly different in this particular I approach? Think is, uh, so for, for example, the vision thing is that the spatial temporal structure generated the first time in the world, I think. In terms of network, because you know it now convolution network in the vision is very famous, but it can deal only with static image. It never understand temporary changing things. What, what, what do you think? Uh, we have an expert on that. Uh, I think so. I am not sure, but there are papers about uh, analyzing video sequences with deep learning also. So I am not sure if you are familiar with the work of. So, for example, Now there is kind of a convolution network extended to the three-dimensional, uh, including time, but that is cheating, right? So <laughs> it, it, it's, it's uh, too artificial, and also problem is that if you make a window very long, and uh, arbitrarily there is a limitation. But uh, this is, uh, we don't use a window, but rather than using simple dynamics, and then I, I, I already talked with that person in 3D, Things, but uh, the, I think this one is uh, much neat, cool. <laughs> 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 but I don't know. But uh, but uh, scalability is also that we have to test. So, but now, so this is going to present in uh, actually uh, next month, and uh, we're gonna get uh, critics, in both good and bad, and then so. But this is kind of premiere, uh, you know, <laughs> presentation to you. Also at ICDR, hmm? You're going to present at ICDR. Yeah, ICDR. Yeah. Yes. Yes, by the way, ICDL is International Conference on Development and Learning, and is the I would say the major conference, even though it's a small one, it's a small community, on people dealing with this kind of problems, dealing with development or learning, developmental robotics. Uh, we are there uh, at Le Baron. We are sponsoring it, and uh, it is a really good conference to you know keep an eye on. Uh, we the AI lab will make it uh, available. You know the, the proceedings where you can access all the articles, and I strongly encourage if you if you are interested in these things, to you know have a look at the proceedings, see what's going on, what kind of articles are published. It's a it's a good place to have a synthetic view on these things. Yeah. <laughs> Other question. An open question. Uh, Will robots have to, to dream to, to reorganize their um, data in the future? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> will, will, will we make a robot dream and to, in a way to reorganize yes, their, that their is data? Uh, if the real robot is necessary to more general intelligence, a generalized one, and the robot have to experience many things, and as I told you, it has to be consolidated, so therefore it's necessary. So daytime act acting and uh, offline, uh, the learning about it, that is, uh, I think, necessary. So sleep is very important. <laughs> I, I understand this point, by the way, and uh, I think it's interesting. It's a way to get that sort of statistical learning back in on the scene uh, using this uh, offline you know, mechanism somehow. But still, I think there are things like instantaneous learning yes, of course. That's and that's immediately part, yeah. available yeah, knowledge. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. And, and, But and uh, that, uh, is that part um, is uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, in this case, is, I mean, there's a more uh, generalization thing, that's why we emphasize. But uh, the real brain have uh, many different way of the learning, reinforcement learning, things the more uh, momentary learning. So that is a uh, so basal ganglia level thing. So that is, uh, so we, we have many things, so. The future, we have to work on that one also. So today, I didn't talk about anything subcortical level, that the emotion things, you know, because that kind of robot interact, the emotional things, capturing is very important, but I haven't worked yet. So we have to put that kind of things also. So, yes. Uh, I'm tr still trying to understand this a bit, but um, from, my, from what I understand, like the high level mm -hmm. um, weights are built from the low level interactions yes. independently of the input you get. So the independent of the intention you give. Like the intention you only give afterwards, but it doesn't impact the way the weights are set, right? Yeah, but uh, is, uh, in a, when the case of the learning, so yeah. that is uh, uh, 
uh, the learning is try to reconstruct, regenerate right. the sequence. Yes. But in that case, uh, then, then inferred what will be the best uh, intention state, initial state. That is uh, inferred during the learning. Yes. So, um. therefore, it, it, this value affects the connectivity weight also. But uh, so connectivity weights and then this uh, uh, intention state is kind of uh, dependent each other. Oh, they are okay. Yeah. Okay, I think I understand. So, and the sure. interesting mm -hmm. thing is that uh, if you look at the language experiment or what we do, similar concepts comes to this intention state become very similar. So, in a two-dimensional okay. vector, but it's very different. It's going to be intention states become very different. Then, in that way, conceptual space can be have a metric space. You can yes. this concept, this concept is close, and this one is very far. That kind of things comes out. That is required, but it's nobody works on. So, that's the language have to be grounded to the metric space. Otherwise, forever concept is symbol, never mm -hmm. we get grounded. But nobody worked on that. I think, but uh, somebody have to seriously work. I think. At the look, still uh, is a little bit working, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Using a non I mean, so symbolic approach. Also yeah, over. yeah. Uh, there is a bridge that needs still to be made for so many years. It yeah, yes, made, yeah. Uh, between these high level intentions and low level. Intentions. But I admit that uh, what I'm doing is still in a very small scale. You are right, the how to scale in a real human level things. But uh, I think before going that, we should go through the developmental path like uh, infant, mama, uh, give me milk, something like that. We should start from that. that and then it takes like a, uh, so when we consider develop, uh, develop the robot, it's like a uh, you know, and, uh, growing baby, and that requires the mother's efforts every day, eight hours, 10 hours, we have to do with it. And that you continue uh, one year, two years later. Yeah. Can you do that? That is uh, actually I wanted to ask you because you want to build like a real human, right? But uh, in that case, you have to do something like that. Do you, can you really do it? So that is, I have my question, but I, I want to answer. So that is, but uh, in the include escal problem. So once you start to do every day, eight hours of taking care, you start to, you know, affection, but can you cut off that one? So that's kind of thing. You are going to build really human-like mind things, but the escal problem also comes. The what kind of discussion you're going to do? That is, uh, I'm very much interested in. <laughs> we, we're working on that indeed, okay. yes. And uh, uh, in fact, also one of the plans is to have uh, humans interacting for long periods of times, you know, long yep. time learning, yep. etc. Uh, because we need that. I think we are at the stage where we need to do this kind of experiments yes, yes. because yeah. the you know very short experiments mm -hmm. where you're teaching some movements etc. Yes. Um, I think we start to understand how it works and now we have to face the yeah. more difficult problem. So yes, I expect that uh, you like an, uh, a company can do that because you have more resources than we laboratory small one. So I expect very much. Yes. <laughs> I hope too. Sunny, yeah. thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> again, welcome to Aldebaran. Uh, <laughs> I hope you've seen some, uh, some things you haven't seen yet. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty impressive yeah, robots yeah, and, and yeah. wonderful uh, people yeah. working on, on this to try to make these robots more intelligent, more useful, more funny, more uh, emotional. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased you, you took the time to come here yeah. and, and tell us about your research. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank and I much. see you yeah. in ICDL. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.